If it ain't black, take it back. You may have thought this was the tagline of a young Michael Evans from Good Times, but it was actually the life principle of the actor behind it, Ralph Carter. However, Ralph has seen and done a lot since his innocent days on the big screen and also made a lot of money. Today, I want to catch you up on the philosophy, lifestyle, and whereabouts of a living legend from the golden days of black television. He went from getting all the awards to hosting his own award show. Let's find out just how much of the Michael we loved was just Ralph Carter being his truest self. To honor the legendary stars who made black Hollywood what it is today, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to keep the legacy of these trailblazing stars alive through videos like these. Ralph sounded and looked like a born natural on the screen. You may be shocked to find out that he was actually a trained professional. He started his acting career on Broadway at the age of nine years old. After a few years on the stage, he got his breakout Broadway role as younger in a play called Raisin. In the year 1973, he won a Drama Desk Award for Most Promising Performer. The very next year, he won a Theater World Award and a Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical. All of this before turning 12 years old. And he really was one of the best. Ralph is remembered for having a uniquely angelic voice at a young age. In his preteen years, he recorded songs like Young and in Love and performed it on Soul Train. These charted at number 10 and number 12 on the billboards. But that's not what we know him for. What we all remember is the comedic and strong-willed babyface revolutionary he played in good times. After the success of Raisin and all the accolades it won him, Ralph was swooped up by Norman Lear. Norman bought out Ralph's Broadway contract and recruited him onto the Dream Team cast that would make the show good times. The show ran for five years, and Ralph established himself as one of the favorites in the main cast. Audiences found his performance funny and charming. He portrayed a positive role model for ambitious preteen black boys who just weren't represented in the mainstream media at the time. In an interview with Our Time Press, he said, I remember that the world stopped when black people knew other black people were going to be on television in the 1950s and 60s. When we knew the Jackson 5 was going to be on the Ed Sullivan show, everything stopped. It was a phenomenon. Unfortunately, after the highlight of his career in good times, he never really went back into the acting scene. Ralph was always more of an advocate for the black community of art, rather than exactly participating in the art himself. In interviews, he tends to go on and on about the legends he met in the acting industry and how much they did for the black community. He views his accolades and achievements as opportunities, rather than something he got because of how great he was. In an interview, he says, I was fortunate to be in the explosion, not only of the African-American theater in the 1970s, but into that wave of consciousness and beautiful television productions that featured African-American artists. I'm very grateful for the people who taught me along the way. He made friends with everyone working on the black Hollywood Broadway scene, and he remembers all of their names and how they all met and know one another. In the years since Good Times, he has dedicated himself to the work he is more passionate about. He is working with the Audience Development Committee, an organization that specifically celebrates the contributions of African Americans to the theater world. Ralph Carter has an estimated net worth of $1 million. This estimate is based on the assets he owns and royalties he receives for shows he has been in as well as his pay for being a member of ADC. He also receives royalties for music he recorded in his teen years. According to ericsinger.com, Carter's net worth has seen fluctuations throughout his career. After the peak of his early success, he managed to maintain his finances through continuous work in entertainment and wise investments. Ralph Carter lives a simple and private life. Unlike most celebrities we're used to, Ralph Carter resides in the heart of New York. For the sake of privacy and safety, the exact address is not available. Some sources state that Ralph Carter lives in a typical New York luxury apartment, which would include a living room, bedrooms, 
a shared rooftop for all residents and other amenities. Ralph Carter has never given a house tour or disclosed his address to the public, but we can put two and two together. This apartment would cost him north of a million to purchase, so if we assume that he rents, it would be around fifty to $60,000 a year. Ralph lives a relatively middle-class lifestyle. He affords the child care and education of all five of his children, as well as the more expensive living costs associated with New York City. Considering that most of his projects are with Broadway and acting and the performed arts, New York was the perfect place for him to reside to stay in tune with Broadway. He has to frequent many Broadway shows so he can be able to do his work for the ADC competently and also participate with the community to create opportunities for growth. Ralph had his start at a very young age on Broadway. A lot of people who work in theater and Broadway are stereotyped to be gay without their comment or consent. Broadway has always had a kindly influence on and solidarity with the gay community, but it does not in any way mean that every person who works in theater is gay. Because of how expressive, fluid, and artistic Broadway is, this artistic expression and pushing of boundaries around art have been stereotyped as being a result of the sexuality of the people who work on Broadway. It isn't fair, honest, or respectful to deliberate about people's sexuality and private lives. Ralph Carter married Lisa Parks in 1987, and they divorced in 1992. Two years later, he married River York, whom he has been happily married to for 30 years now. He has five children in total, two from his previous marriage and three from his current marriage. We have established that he's happily married, so why did people think Ralph Carter was gay? And why were there rumors that he died of HIV? More importantly, why do they care? Well, from the stated stereotypes from before as well as Ralph's higher-pitched voice as a preteen, the media spread rumors speculating about his sexuality. They questioned the way his character was dressed in good times, which looks more effeminate, compared to fashion senses now but was perfectly appropriate attire for a young man at that time. Also, Ralph was a child. He had no control over the costume and design department, and he wore whatever they gave him. Unable to tell truth from sensationalized fiction, and unable to mind their own business, people instated this rumor as fact in the cultural conversation about Ralph Carter because he just didn't have the time to waste debunking a random rumor about him. There have been a lot of personal anecdotes by anonymous people who claim to know more about that aspect of Ralph, and they may also have contributed to the perpetuation of this rumor. Ralph Carter has always been kind and respectful to people of marginalized groups. He was raised on Broadway and participated and interacted with many different kinds of people working in art and the black community. Because of this, he learned the skill of being able to spend time with and accept people who were different from him, and he has always been outspoken about his beliefs on equality and the fight for representation. But I suppose being a Broadway prodigy was not enough for people to be impressed by him. Ralph Carter has gotten back to the theater, but he isn't exactly on stage. His main work is in engaging with, awarding, and creating funding for certain theater shows all across America. The Odelco Awards that Ralph Carter is the vice president of may not seem as important as, say, the Oscars or the Golden Globes. But the Oscars and the Golden Globes have run into a lot of scandal for awarding people who are harmful to the community, as well as being sorely lacking in the diversity department. This award specifically and exclusively aims to award black people working in the theater arts industry who would never be acknowledged by the more prolific institutions. They even have awards for just being an iconic member of the black theater arts community. Why didn't Ralph Carter become a bigger star? A lot of stars from his time period were able to become even bigger and more popular as they grew in the industry. He starred alongside Janet Jackson in Good Times, and yet he never became as popular as her over the years. People theorized that Ralph was not a particularly talented actor as the years went on, or that he just wasn't interested in acting himself as he got older. It's also possible that Jimmy Walker 
outshined Ralph on good times. Nonetheless, Ralph was more interested in the culture of African-American music and art than he was in personally creating it. Ralph reunited with his fellow cast from Good Times at the 2024 Urban One Honors. This was a special reunion organized for the 50th anniversary of the show. He met J.J. Walker and Bernadette Stainis 50 years after the show ended. Ralph was joyful and charming during the interaction, despite the fact that J.J. was often cold and didn't interact with anyone else on the cast. Unlike the educational and art-loving interviews that Ralph often gives throughout his career, J.J. tends to talk a lot about how much he disliked the cast of Good Times, and Ralph Carter was no exception on that list. Click on this next video to stay caught up on the talk of Black Hollywood and your favorite Black Hollywood stars.